Tiger Woods is projected to miss the cut at the Genesis. So let's see how his final round, or round two, I should say, has shaped up. Starting here, this is his tee shot, 192 yards on hole 14. Tiger with iron in his hand, he sticks it two feet from the pin, and he would not miss that putt. That puts Tiger back to one under. Moving along to the 17th, this is his third shot on a par five. Tiger with an iron from 180. He ends up stuffing that shot to just two feet from the pin. Tiger would go on to bury that putt there on the par five, putting Tiger back to two under. All the fans in the background there following Tiger along. Here on the sixth hole, this is Tiger for birdie putt. And it goes into the bunker on six. Not an ideal situation for Tiger. That'll be for bogey. He falls back to one under after that bogey putt. Moving along to the eighth hole. Par putt here from off the back of the green. Tiger with a long range par putt. And he comes up just short of the pin for a bogey. Tiger then falls to even par for the tournament. It's been kind of a roller coaster day for Tiger. He did have a strong round one, round two. Not as strong here on the ninth. This is a chip for par right here. 16 feet past the green. Lips out. And then he would clean up that one for a bogey. Hugs over to Rory there. Tiger plus one, shoots three over. 74, getting a look at Tiger's scorecard for round two. Three bogeys on the back nine there. Second round score plus three, shooting a 74. A lot different than his round one score of 69. And here we're going to bring in Michael Breed to talk about Tiger's round two performance. Michael, we know that he's projected to miss the cut. We don't know anything for sure just yet. But based off of Tiger's performance, especially on the back nine there, what are your main takeaways from Tiger's performance? Well, there's a couple of things. Obviously, uh, the late tee time on Thursday and then the early tee time Friday um, creates a bit of fatigue and a tough turnaround for him. And you can see late in the round there, he birdies or bogeys rather three of his last four holes. Contrast that to yesterday where he birdied his last three holes. So you look at the finishes and the finishes are quite different. One round is a 69. One round is a 74. He makes three birdies in a row to end his day. Yesterday, he birdies or bogeys three of the last four holes to end his round today. So I think that's one of the things that you take away is the fatigue. The other thing that I think a lot of people, including Tiger, and you can never really understand this, is the effect of, of adrenaline. And yesterday he plays with a ton of adrenaline. He has as much energy as he needs coming down the stretch because of that. And then all of a sudden today, the adrenaline is gone. It's a, it's a, it's a high that he has at the end of that day, and he comes in and there's some fatigue. And no, he had a lot of treatment that he had to go to or go through that included last night when he got finished playing and then also at the start this morning, probably up at three or four o'clock this morning. And so I, I just think fatigue is a big deal. And I saw that in his golf swing. I saw a lot of swings where he was really unable to stay on top of the golf ball. The club was getting stuck behind him and that golf ball was now going out to the right hand side. That's exactly what happened to him on number nine. And number nine, which was his 18th hole, he pushes his tee shot, hits at only 280 yards after hitting shots yesterday that were well in the 300s. And then from 159 yards, not a very difficult shot from the right rough. He works underneath it, hits it fat into that front bunker, only 141 yards when he's expecting to get 156 or 159 out of it. And all of a sudden he comes up and he makes a bogey there. So I think what you're dealing with is fatigue and adrenaline from that that a very emotional day yesterday, and then also the quick turnaround from a late tee time on Thursday and an early tee time on Friday. And Michael, I want to talk a little bit more about Tiger's short game and, and some of those bogeys that he made in, the, in his final holes. And we do have some video again we're going to replay. Of course, hole six where he, he makes that putt and it goes right into the bunker there. Do you think this might have been the turning point does he lose his moment, momentum after having a really disappointing putt right into the bunker it, was there any chance i guess in your mind that he could kind of change direction after his performance there on six 
Look, I think that shot that he hit into the, to six, the par three, that ball carried up onto the top side of that bunker just left of it. And if it had carried another three or four feet, would have been a beautiful shot. And he probably would have had a very good, uh, I'm going to say 10, 12-foot putt for birdie. He, it catches the, the top part of that, that bank and then runs back down to the front of the hole. That was 71 feet. And he debated chipping it and pitching it, playing wide side. I think what he tried to do was he tried to force something there and, and – uh, he did hit it into the hole. He just hit it into the wrong hole, that big that big hole in the middle of that green. That was a little unfortunate for him. But I don't think that was the turning point. No, I'll tell you where there were a couple things. One, the putter let him down. He started the day. He had a number of putts that were inside of 10 feet. He had two good looks, both at 10 and 11, which was his, number, his first hole and his second hole. Uh, one was about four feet that he missed. One was another six or seven footer that he missed. He also didn't take advantage of his 10th hole, number one, the very short uh, par five that was playing and has been playing the easiest on uh, the golf course in, the, in these first two rounds. And so I think what happens is, is that he just kind of, he got behind it and the putter really let him down. In fact, he was minus two shots for this round strokes gained putting. Yesterday, as the, as the, um, uh, the, the complete opposite. He gained almost two shots with the putter. So if you look at it, to me, this all falls down on the putter. It was very successful yesterday. It was not very good today. And Michael, after round one, Tiger shot a two under 69. The last time he did that was back in 2020, the Masters there. And, and Tiger said at this, at this pre presser, um, you know, saying like, hey, we're going to come into the Genesis, see what we need to work on before going to Augusta. What do you think their takeaways are going to be and really what they're going to work on before the Masters comes around in a couple of months? Well, I think the interesting thing is, is that when you start playing major championships, and I'll include the players in that, you don't have to worry about playing in, in a pro-am. And Tiger played in the pro-am on Wednesday. So you start to think about this. He got three rounds of golf in competition in a PGA Tour uh, event, though he's not going to likely not going to play this weekend. He will have learned something again, and Tiger is one of the best at learning uh, from his failures. And this is certainly not the, the, the uh, round of golf that he wanted to play, and it's not the outcome that he wanted after two rounds of, of golf. So when I look at this, I think he and his team will, will figure out how to be a little bit more rested, how, how, to be, uh, how to recover a little bit more successfully as they go from a late tee time to an early tee time. And there's no question that you have to deal with that at some point. If you start on Thursday with an early tee time, you get a late tee time on Friday, you make the cut, but you don't play very, very well. And all of a sudden you might be six shots back of the lead. You're going to have a quick flip turn from that late tee time to an early tee time on Saturday. So what is he going to learn from the recovery? How is he going to be able to be better positioned and better performance uh, is certainly something that I, I expect to have from him. also too the takeaways. He's going to work on that putting a lot more. He's going to try to put himself into some more situations where he's playing short shots from golf courses on greens and, and uh, with grasses that are, are similar to what he's going to play. In order for you to be able to hit these short shots around the green at, at Riviera, you have to get used to Kikuya. And that is something that, that he obviously doesn't deal with where he, you know, where he lives down in Florida. So I think that's something that he'll learn from. And I think Tiger will learn from this. I think he was certainly in better condition uh, when when I watched him walk around, much better condition than he was, say, six or seven months ago. I do think that that um, he will have learned a lot. And I believe that you you will see him play one more time before he plays at Augusta. And it's probably going to be in Florida, maybe the API or uh, the Players' Championship. All right, Michael Bree joining us here on CBS Sports HQ. Thanks so much, Michael. We appreciate it. If you're just tuning in, we are following that breaking news where Tiger is projected to miss the cut at the Genesis Invitational. You can watch the final round on CBS. That's Saturday and Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. And, of course, all of that action is live on Paramount Plus streaming there as well. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.